Everyone, welcome to the Chrome Show at thechromeshow.com, part of the Geek News Central Network and also a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Hello, everyone. My name is Todd Cochran, and I want to welcome you to the first edition of the Chrome Show. This is a project that I've been working on for some weeks, and I wanted to be able to get the first episode out. But to give you a little background before we get into the actual show, I want to talk just a little bit about history of me if you're watching, uh, if you're catching one of my shows for the very first time. Or for those of you that are longtime listeners of some of my other content, just sit back and relax a little bit. Just to give you a little history, uh, I've been creating content online since really since 2004, so far as it goes, audio and video content. Been a blogger for many years and consider myself a true techno geek. And been producing the Geek New Central podcast since October 2004 with over 680 episodes. Uh, we produce that show twice a week, and it comes out every Tuesday and Friday morning. I also do the Saturday morning tech show when I'm available here in my studio in Honolulu. I've also got some co-hosts that produce content at geeknewcentral.com. Uh, one of those is The Gadget Professor, and that's hosted by Don Bain. And he is absolutely the gadget professor. And also we've got Robot Underpants. This is Langley. Uh, basically talks about stuff going on in the, uh, in the Valley and in the San Francisco area. It's kind of a one-off show at Geek News Central. It's kind of a fun show. This show will officially reside at thechromeshow.com, but the feed to subscribe to it will be available at geeknewcentral.com and will also be cross-posted at geeknewcentral.com as well. So depending on where you're used to getting the content, you can tune in to uh, either site to grab the show. We'll be live streaming the show when we do it. Then we're up right now on Ustream on our Geek in the Central podcast uh, stream, a network stream. So we want to welcome those of you that are watching at this time. You also later, if you decide that uh, you want to subscribe to the show, you're going to be able to catch the show in the Roku, on Boxy, or of course you can su subscribe to it via RSS, iTunes, or Zoom Marketplace. So some of those feeds will be starting to populate over the next couple of days. So we encourage you to definitely uh, uh, give us a few days to get everything dialed in as far as the feeds go with Apple and with Zoom. But I'm excited to be able to bring uh, this first show of the Chrome Show to you. And what really piqued my interest in wanting to do this show about Chrome OS and the Chrome browser is really Google's release of the Chromebooks. And what we're going to be using today is I have a Samsung Chromebook that's actually dialed into our, my, my, my uh, TriCaster here. And uh, what will happen is, is I'll be able to flip in and bring up a live screen so that you can see it. I was unable to really resize a screen much differently than what you see right now for those of you that are watching. So there is going to be, be a little bit of uh, uh, some challenges, I think, when it comes to looking at, uh, at close details but we hope that it's able to share enough information with you that you're able to see exactly what we're demonstrating uh, with the Chromebook and the Chrome OS. I want to encourage you to sign up for the newsletter. You'll find a link to the newsletter on both the websites at thechromeshow.com and also at geeknewcentral.com where you'll be able to sign up and I'll send you a, a detailed show notes of everything that I covered during the show so that way that uh, you'll be guaranteed to know when the episode has been released and when a new show is available for you to uh, to check out. Um, lots going on in the world of tech, and lots of news coming out of Google this week, of course, with the addition of Google+. Plus. So we'll be talking a little bit about that as well as we walk into this first edition of the uh, Chrome Show. If you have comments, you can send me a comment at chromeshow at gmail.com. chromeshow at gmail.com is a place to reach out to us for contact, and you also call our 24-hour day hotline available at 619-342-7365, 619-342-7365. We always appreciate your feedback, and uh, let, just let us know what you like about the show, what you don't like, and of course, you can follow me at Twitter, uh, at Geek News as well. So I always have a little bit of a listing of show notes and uh, ideas and things to go over uh, with, and today's very short because I wanted to get right into the content. Many of you that have been over to the chromeshow.com website have already seen the unboxing of the Chromebook and uh, it's it's an amazing device. It's you know, you open the lid and it's instantly on. And in the bottom month that I've had it so far, there's really I've only rebooted it I think one time. The rest of the time I just shut the lid and when I need it I open it up and I'm able to just it's instant on. 
and it works. And it's one of those things that I think is important for you to realize that while this, while the Chrome OS won't do everything for you right now, I think what we're going to see over time is Google improve the operating system. They're going to improve the browser to the point where at some point in the future, we may see a point where maybe we don't need the desktop so much. Now, I'm, not a, I'm a firm believer of, of having stuff on a hard drive, but you know, everything's moving to the cloud. We look at what Apple's doing and moving to the cloud, some of the stuff that Microsoft has introduced going to the cloud. So while the complete utilization of the Chromebook is, you probably won't replace all day-to-day -day activities for most of you, it does do um, a great substitute. Now, one thing I did, I didn't experiment. I took the Chromebook with me on travel. I was in the in the lower 48 uh, a couple of weeks ago, had the, the Chromebook with me. And what I found was that after I really kind of got done doing some heavy lifting stuff on my laptop, I'd often find myself uh, on, on the couch in the hotel room or during a meeting, opening it up, being able to use the Chromebook and doing notes in Google Docs and a variety of other functions where I really didn't need separate applications. Now, as developers develop new applications for the device, little by little, I think we'll see some of those functions be able to be substituted on the Chromebook itself. But what really amazed me so far, too, is it's pretty seamless. If I'm somewhere where there is no um, Wi-Fi connection that I can connect, in, can connect into, um, basically Verizon 3G takes over and I've had good connectivity to be able to do what I need to. And then when there was a Wi-Fi um, available, I was able to log into Wi-Fi and switch back and forth. And so far this month, and in basically having this with me for about two weeks, there was about 50, 50% 50 of the time that I was able to um, connect via Wi-Fi and the other percent I didn't. And I used about 300 megs on Verizon of their about one gig total, I think is what I get for the 995 a month plan that I'm on. So I continue to travel with this and we'll get ideas and be able to share those with you on what my experience has been. But I guess what I should do is go ahead and get right into the actual Chromebook, Chromebook interface. We'll walk through that a little bit and then we'll go into some of the basic apps that I have found and give you some basically just a quick rundown of the Chromebook and then following shows we'll definitely get into uh, the meat of the, uh, of the device much, much deeper. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up, and this is the interface you see when the uh, Chromebook boots. It just brings up a standard browser window. You can see the apps across the, in the middle of the page there, YouTube, Google Calendar, Scratchpad, uh, Google Docs, Gmail, TweetDeck. That's an app that I added that I'll give you a little bit of a, uh, a demo of here in a few minutes. Um, Facebook, and really what I was expecting with Facebook was, oh, a special app. But what it really does is just take you to the Facebook page. And, of course, an app by Revision 3, my good friend over there, Jim Lauterbach, and the great content being produced by those folks over there. I should go. I should mention, of course, that this show is uh, available at techpodcast.com, and there's 130 shows over there, great tech content. Feel free to go over there and, and, and look at what's available and get subscribed. And, uh, of course, I want to encourage you to subscribe to all my shows as well at geeknewscentral.com. So this is what you see when you, when you basically load the uh, – and you have to log in. You have to provide your Gmail login. And it logs you in and sets you up so that you can immediately go to work. One thing that uh, there's some functions here that's available on the uh, device to be able to set things up. And I want to just show you here. If I go ahead and I just click the little, and I don't know if you can see this in the top right-hand corner, there's a customizing control of Google Chrome. I'll click on that, and I'll go down here to... The settings page and what it's going to do it's just going to open up a page that show the settings and the settings the settings are real simple and i think the thing that's going to be nice about this with you know sharing this um, uh, information with parents and people that are a little bit technically challenged is that there's not a lot in here that you can mess up and matter of fact so far there's really nothing that'll make your experience bad but on startup you can reopen the pages that were last open you can set a home page just like you do on any other device, or you can have it open up the uh, the Chrome interface. And you can on the toolbar, you can show the home button. You can always show bookmarks bar as well. So there's some functions there you can set. Along with that, there's a link there for personal stuff. So basically, I've got uh, just one of the default pictures, and I have the system set up to synchronize with my Google dashboard. Um, ability to save passwords and autofill where needed. 
And then in the system settings, the system settings are very basic. You put basically put your date and time, put the time zone that you're in, touchpad sensitivity, the language that you are, that you, you know, the, the English, Spanish, the whole nine yards. And if you need accessibility features, they've got a link there as well. So far as internet goes, this shows all the available Wi-Fi that are currently available. It shows you what I'm connected to, tell you what's available, and it also tells you in the bottom the remembered network. So as you go from place to place, it'll actually remember the networks that you were on before so that you were able to really instantly get back up on Wi-Fi. Now under the hood is a selection where you basically set up how the navigation works and prediction services. So you're typing in geek news and it should complete central.com. Um, enable phishing and malware protection. Enable automatic, uh, send usage statistics and crash reports to Google. Right now I have that enabled to basically help Google improve uh, the, the Chromebook and the Chrome OS. And also there are a translate option here to offer to translate pages that aren't in languages that you need. And there's some SSL settings as well. Along with that in the settings, you can enable a guest account. I currently have mine turned off and I allow usernames and photos on the sign-in screen and I restrict sign-in to the folks that have made accounts. So really that's kind of it as far as the actual um, settings go. When you save that, it basically comes back to the main apps page. For those of you that aren't familiar with Geek News Central, which is my home site for all of our content, you definitely want to check out geeknewscentral.com. You basically come over to the website, and on the second column, you see the orange box. That's where you're going to find information to subscribe to the Chrome Show, or you'll find it directly on the chromeshow.com website. So every time you open a tab, you basically get the same window. You get the apps window. One thing that I have wanted to show you here, too, was the extension area. And what I have found by loading a number of extensions that not all extensions work with the Chromebook. So you need to be careful as you're loading them, test them, make sure they work. And if they don't, uninstall them. I've had a little bit of trouble from time to time when I've had an extension loaded that didn't quite seem to work. And I think what Google's going to need to do in the future is they are going to really need to work on uh, making sure that the, all the extensions are clearly marked whether or not they work on a Chromebook or not so that we don't have to guess because obviously people are running Chrome on a variety of different com operating systems and when they load an application that's expecting to see something on a hard drive or a location-based service where you're trying to tell it to something on this physical hard drive, it's really not possible. Even there was places to save images and so forth, um, it is a little bit of a challenge. So make sure that you pay attention to the extensions. What I want to do here is I want to show you initially, um, just, you know, if we go over into my Gmail account, you see it's got the standard email stuff here. I have gotten an early invite to um, Google+, Plus, and I wanted to just give you a, a quick look at Google+, Plus if you haven't seen it already. And you'll see here in Google+, Plus, it loads up. It's got a profile picture of me, and it's got the stream of information, stream of data that's being uh, shared by people that I've linked to. And also I've got new people here that are sharing information with you that I need to go ahead and add into a circle. Up here in the right hand corner, there's a little red box that basically tells me, hey, there's five new events that you need to pay attention to. So if I click on that, I see that a few people have added me to their circle and I need to see, basically go in and decide whether or not I'm going to follow them. Uh, Kirk is a friend of, uh, acquaintance of mine, so I'm going to add him to the acquaintance section. Uh, Bendrix, I believe, is a fan of the show, so I'm going to add him to my fan circle. Uh, David, I don't know him, so I'm going to put him in following. Uh, Benjamin Straw, I know him, so we're going to put him in the acquaintance uh, section. And there's a few others here, too, that I need to go ahead and add. Now, that's a quick way to add people to it, but the really where the, where the, uh, where the rubber hits the road is actually on the page that shows the actual circles that you set up. And what I love about the circles is I have this really broke down by friends, family, acquaintances, people that I'm following, business, fans, Geek News Central, bloggers and folks that work on our website, podcasters that I know, and it goes into PR people as well, the raw voice partners, and then, of course, the Tech Podcast Network stuff. So basically, I have the ability here to to 
organize people within Google Plus and make it real simple for me to keep things organized so that when I go back to the main page, and I actually set this up so that I want to see, okay, let's look at what has been happening with folks that are in Tech Podcast Network. What are they saying about Google Plus or what is the discussion? And basically, there's a few people in there from TPN right now that have got this added. And it's real simple. You basically, you know, you can choose which, I guess for a better word, which stream of, of conversation you want to review. And because this is still in beta, what we're finding is, is of course, family. Right now, the stream is empty because none of my family have gotten invites as yet. But the acquaintances that I know that are currently in the system, there's more information. So it's all a great stream of information. I think the best thing that I'd like to say about this so far is that it's kind of a mesh of Twitter, friend feed, um, Facebook, Flickr, and a few other services kind of tied into one. And what I really like about it is Twitter stuff is going so fast, tweets about people going to the bathroom and, you know, whatever those th people are tweeting in Google Plus so far, it's all about conversations and really detailed conversations and comment threads. Um, no spam yet, thank goodness. Uh, but, you know, it's, I'm sure things will get a little more crazy as time goes on. So we'll see how this scales as they bring people into um, Google+. Plus. But one of the coolest things, and one of the things that I had tried to figure out on the Chromebook, okay, how do I enable the camera? Because when I got the Chromebook, I really couldn't figure out how to make the camera work. There was really no um, apps or anything out there, but I knew there was a camera on board. So when Google Plus launched, I said, aha, let's go ahead and see, um, they talk about this Hangout where you can basically start a Hangout. And this is going to go ahead and load here in a second as it's, uh, we hope it is. It says just a few seconds, it's going to load. And I'm going to go ahead and click the Hangout button. And what you can see is it'll open up some stuff on the bottom. It says no one else is here right now. So it doesn't really show, shows me down in the bottom of the box and it shows the the mic levels and so forth. But what will happen is, as people come into the site, they will be able to be added to the conversation and we'll be able to see who's talking. Um, so it's kind of cool, you'll be able to chat on the side. If you get bored and, and you wanna share stuff, you can actually bring up YouTube and actually show some YouTube videos, stuff that's popular, you can search for different things. So YouTube will load here in a second and I think it's going to. There we go. <laughs> and sorry, we don't seem to be able to YouTube player. Well, apparently something is amiss. So let's try this again. I swear this worked yesterday when I was playing with this. Let's see if it loads the second time. And yep, some plugin has crashed. So um, that's that's encouraging. So I think <laughs> we will actually. It, it's trying. Did it recover? I don't know. But anyway, we'll give up on this. But you can play some YouTube videos. It was working fine, so maybe I've just had a bunch of stuff going on. But um, this is a good thing about recording live. You get to see all the in the synchronies of the of the site and of the of the uh, um, actual application itself. Nothing is perfect in the world of new media doing things like this. So what I wanted to do is share a couple of the true apps that are on the system. And it, I thought it was important for you to really kind of see the difference between just true browser activity and what would, has really been built for the platform in a as an application. The first thing I want to show you is TweetDeck. And TweetDeck has a, basically a list of some of, of my feeds. It's basically I got my primary Twitter feed. And I can see over here in the inbox, I've got a, a message from someone a, a couple of days ago. But I can really follow what's going on with people. And I can get information about their their actual profiles as well. I can actually follow this on a kind of real-time basis in here. And this will update uh, continuously even though I'm not in the actual um, system. One thing I did like here is we've got a link here where someone retweeted something from Geek News Central. So if I click on this particular link, it'll actually load in the browser a specific article that they're referring to over in Geek News Central. But it, I can go back to TweetDeck and look at stuff that other folks have linked to as well. 
And it's got all the standard functions. I can reply, I can star a command, I can retweet. Um, there's even additional information. Send a direct message, um, do some translation if need be so. So that's one of the features that is in the Chromebook is the ability to go ahead and use applications like a tweet deck. Meantime, we'll go back to Quick Notes. I guess I, I guess I should say that how I loaded this was I had already preloaded it. There's a tab here where it says Quick Notes. So basically clicked on that and loaded this up. And I like using little tabs, you know, little note taking like this. I find this real uh, handy when it comes to um, taking notes, just like on the iPhone, if you need to take a quick note about something, a telephone number or something. So, you know, you just basically go, can put a quick note in here and it'll save it. And then it'll be available to you at, at any time um, when you come back and load the actual application up. And you've got the ability here to, you know, save a variety of notes. And I can say, go ahead and say save it online. And it saved it. And then if I want to make a new note, I just go ahead and click plus and this is a new note. And it's just a quick way to take some notes. It's pretty cool. And I'm sure as time goes on, we're going to see a lot more application uh, that will be, make it available to do lots more stuff like cutting and pasting in images and that type of stuff. So that's what I've liked to, about this little um, application. And if you have this, once you have this set up and you have your account set up, it'll tie back to your, if you're on a regular computer in a browser, you can actually load this as a, application in a regular browser and you'll be able to get access to these same notes so i think while we were waiting here i heard crazy birds get loaded and i mean angry birds not crazy birds so as as we go well let's try the hd version and let's see as we play this and i wonder if i can turn the volume down a little So I think my kids have been playing this, so I, I'm a little bit scared to go in here and, and try this right now. So let's let's just go back to level one and do something. Uh, so, you know, it's pretty, not too bad from a response standpoint. And again, this is all running in the browser on, on Chrome. And um, so this is an offline capable version as well. So you don't have to actually uh, be online. You could do this in the airplane if you want. So we'll go back here and we'll see how my shooting skills are with uh, with Angry Birds. I don't play this very often, but let's see what, how I do it. So I guess I did pretty good. I knocked everything over and uh, got it on the first first go. So, oh, maybe not. What did I miss? Well, I guess I have to knock. It tells you how much I know about this thing. But anyway, that gives you a little quick view of, of Angry Birds. But most importantly, when you're using the the Chromebook, where you're going to find additional information as is at the web store. And I think one thing that Google could do better here is again, they've got these new and noteworthy apps and a uh, new and worthy featured uh, items, but some of these, you got to be careful because not all of them will play standalone. In other words, they won't play on the Chromebook. It's they're more designed to be um, used with browsers that have, um, that are on a regular like Windows machine. So I think at some point they're going to have to really designate what stuff is uh, Chromebook ready. And uh, looking for some feedback from the folks at Google to say, okay, this is what we're going to do. But up to this point, uh, we haven't heard any information. But I guess I'll leave you here with one little um, look at, at another app. And this is the one from Revision 3. And pretty cool. So this loads right up. You can kind of tell at the top that you're still in a browser. But you can, you know, you can go here and look. And here's Callie in her latest uh, geekbeat.tv show. And what it does, you load it. It just takes you over to a special TV show at uh, Revision 3. And it will start the video here at uh, some point when it, when it caches. So um, pretty cool stuff. And this is just makes it easy. It looks sexy. It's nice and clean. Here's an ad starting for Geekbeat. But um, pretty quick to get started. And... That's basically my kind of quick look of what's going on initially with the Chromebook. I'll be doing this on a weekly basis and probably bringing you um, one or two cool little new and noteworthy things to talk about and sharing information with you on the Chromebook. And I'd uh, love to hear your feedback. And if you've got any comments on this first edition, we're a little rough here today. Uh, but uh, when you're dealing with a... Um, when you can't preload everything and you're waiting on the laptop a little bit and hoping everything goes right, uh, it'll just be one of those shows that'll be what it'll be. 
So I hope you enjoyed this first edition of the of the Chrome Show. And if you again, if you have feedback, send me an email at chromeshow at gmail.com. And of course, my name is Todd Cochran. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Geek News, or you can call our show hotline at 619-342-7365. Make sure you preface it that you're calling about the Chrome Show so that I know so I know know that, so I don't play it on another uh, another one of our podcasts. But we hope you enjoyed episode one of the Chrome Show. Until next time, take care and aloha.